If we go to the coefficients view, we can see the coefficients used to describe the filter in numerical form, which we can copy and paste into other applications. If you're using a third-party DSP library, a third-party product, or writing your own code, then you can select, copy, and paste these directly. The first set of coefficients is in floating point format and are for a whole filter. If you're developing for an embedded system, then your device might not have a floating point unit, or you may choose integer arithmetic because it is faster. To select integer arithmetic, use the arithmetic field to select the word lengths for memory, coefficients, and accumulator. If your hardware multiplier multiplies two 16-bit integers to produce a 32-bit result, then one of the 16 by 16 options usually performs best. When using integer computation, you can enable the filter simulator by clicking on the right-hand graph buttons. The simulator will imitate the effects of integer roundoff and is a good way to spot if the real filter will work in the same way as the theoretical one. With 16-bit arithmetic, the curves are almost the same, but with 8x8 arithmetic, the frequency response can change due to pole zero shifting. The shifted poles can also be seen in red on the z-plane view. The remaining coefficients are presented in fixed point integer form if applicable. If multiple sections are present, the coefficients are separately listed for each section. If we go to the code view, we can see that it has automatically generated C code for the filter, which we can copy and paste into our project. The header is listed first, followed by the C file. Large projects can have many symbols and variables, and we want to ensure that our filter does not collide with the names of other functions or libraries. We also want to give our filter a meaningful name so that we can identify it. You can use the class field to change the name of the filter. All of the functions and structure definitions are prefixed by their, this name, ensuring their uniqueness. The frequency response of a digital filter is always measured relative to the sample rate, which is the speed in samples per second that numbers will be fed into the filter. The default is 1 Hz or 1 sample per second, but a typical audio application might use, say, 48,000 samples per second. We can enter this value in the sample rate box, and our displays will be updated to reflect the sample rate of that signal. I've set up a small test project for an ARM-based microcontroller. I've created an empty header and source file where I'll paste the filter and some simple code to use it. We'll select the header code, copy to the clipboard, and paste to the header file. We'll do the same for the source file. If we look at the main function, we create a new instance of the filter here. When we're done, we would destroy the filter here. In the main loop, we read a value from an analog to digital converter, then write it to the filter. We read the output from the filter and write it to a digital to analog converter. The user supplies the code to interface with the ADC and DAC. To test, we'll compile the project, set a breakpoint, and debug. We can also enable test cases that we can run to test our filter. These can be selected at the bottom of the code view. In the next section, we will cover infinite impulse response or IIR filters.